In this video, we're going to be replacing the AC condenser in this 2013 Hyundai Elantra. You will need to remove your front bumper and headlights, as well as your top radiator support to gain access. We're going to remove the negative battery terminal. We're going to do that with a 10 millimeter socket. Just get it loose enough and wiggle it straight up and off. Just set that aside. Across the front here, we're going to take out these clips so we can pull the panel forward a little bit. They're Phillips head. You don't want to press down while you're doing these. Just let the tool do the work and pull upwards a little. It'll allow them to back out. If you put pressure on there, nothing's going to happen. If you go lightly, they'll back out. All right, now underneath our bumper, we have a couple of Phillips clips. We're gonna go ahead and remove those now. We're just gonna use a Phillips bit. You just let it spin and don't push up and they'll come out. So this is attached to your fender liner. You can move that back just a little bit, right here. Now, straight up inside your fender, you'll find one more Phillips screw. Be one on driver and passenger. All right, so now that you have your screws removed from the inside of your fender, your clips across the bottom, you can go ahead and grab the side of your bumper here. And we're just gonna pull straight out. Just like that. Now what you can do, grab your bumper from the center here and the grill area and pull straight forward. What we're going to do is sit this right back in here and do the same on the other side and then we'll just take the bumper straight off. All right, so you have some clips here to clip into your fender. Also, what you had here are some clips on the bumper to clip in underneath the headlight. You'll have that on both sides. Once you remove these two sets of clips, should be able to walk the bumper straight forward and off. We'll do that now. If you're doing this alone, you're gonna to wanna to grab the bumper right in the middle, slowly pull it off the car. Once you get a little bit of room here, you wanna grab it like this and walk it off the vehicle. If you have a second set of hands, you can both grab a side. In this case, we're just gonna take it right off the car. Now we do have some harnesses that we have to deal with. Fog light harnesses. If you can get to them before you take the bumper off, that's ideal. If not, you can rotate your bumper up like this. All right, so grab your clips. Unplug your lights. And now you can take your bumper and set it aside. With a 12 millimeter socket, we're gonna take out this bolt. All right, with a 10 millimeter socket, we'll take out these two bolts. Now we can remove our headlight. You wanna do the same thing on the other side. All right, so our electrical connection, just press down this tab, pull rearwards on the plug, move that out of the way. All right, now we can remove our headlight. 
kind of grab it from the bottom and you just pull straight forward and remove your headlight and repeat for the other side. All right, now we're gonna remove our two lines going to our condenser. We have two 10 millimeter nuts. I'm gonna remove those now. Now with our two 10 millimeter nuts removed, we can pull up on our lines. Just remember to wear safety glasses while you're doing this. There may still be some residual pressure in the line. And we can set that aside, do the same for the other side. And set that aside as well. So now we're gonna remove our air intake Unfortunately, our vehicle didn't come with a, one of the clips in here. So this one is just a push in, in the center. And then with a panel or trim tool, you can work that up a little. And get underneath your clip. Remove that. With our clips removed, you can go ahead and push this back a little bit. Grab this tube here in this end and just pull straight up. So we're gonna drain the radiator now. To give you a better idea of where the drain is, we took out this air intake tube that goes right here. So if you reach down underneath your vehicle, you would have to come across the splash pan to find that. We're gonna go straight down here and drain it now. To speed up the process, I also like to open our radiator cap and your coolant overflow cap. So we have this top panel here that needs to be removed to gain access to your condenser. We have two 12 millimeter bolts here, two 10 millimeter bolts here on the outside. There are some on the inside as well. We're gonna address the front ones first. So there are four here and there are four here. We'll take those off now. Again, 12 millimeters here. We'll do the other two 12s. Top two 10 millimeters. All right, on the back side here, we have again two 12 millimeter bolts, our hood connection, our hood cable connection, our radiator fill connection bolts, electrical connection for our hood sensor, and a couple more 12 millimeter bolts down here. Grab these two 12 millimeters back here. All right, now these two bolts here, 10 millimeters. All right, so now with that free, we can remove our electrical connection here on our hood sensor. All right, so now with everything loose except our hood latch cable, which I do not believe you need to remove, if you have the ability to push this up and back, 
it should grant you enough room. If you need to remove your hood latch cable, go ahead and do that, but this should be enough room. All right, so we're gonna take these two Phillips clips out. Now by removing these two Phillips clips, this allows us to manipulate this freely. What we're gonna do is just pry this back and pop it straight out. That'll give us much more clearance. You can rotate it if you want. We're just gonna remove it completely on both sides. So now with the flathead screwdriver, we're gonna come in here and just pry these lock tabs open. both top and bottom. I'm gonna do that to both sides. Now with all four clips undone and your condenser ready to slide up, just go ahead and grab it and slide straight up. All right, so on our new condenser, we have to replace these two studs. The new condenser came with them, so we'll just thread them in. and just thread them in as close as you can to that center stop there. When we put the nuts on them, it'll take them the rest of the way. All right, so when you go to reconnect your high and low lines, you wanna make sure your O-rings at the bottom here are either in really good shape or replaced. Ours are in good shape, so we're gonna use just a little bit of pag oil on the bottom just to lubricate that O-ring. We're going to slide that into place. While we're here, we're going to do the same thing on this line. Just get it into place. Here's your O-ring. I'm just going to slide that over the stud just to have it in place. I'm going to press down this line and seat it into position. We'll thread our 10 millimeter nut onto the stud without losing it in the abyss of the vehicle. And we'll do the same for this line here. All right, so now with your 10 millimeter nuts started on there, we'll tighten them down. So now to seat your condenser back into place, you have two clips, top and bottom. You have them on both sides. I'm gonna lift the condenser until your bottom clip is in place. check on the other side, make sure we're in place as well. All right, so when you have your two clips, top and bottom situated, go ahead and press straight down. And make sure you've locked in both sides. All right, so our rubber insulators need to go back into these top brackets. You can just squeeze them back into place. I'm just gonna leave them right there for right now. Same thing on this side. All right, so now we can bring our top radiator panel hood latch support back into place. I want to line these up here. So just slide straight down on both sides. What you look for in these is that those isolator brackets line up in place here for these two bolts. All right, now we can start reassembling. All right, so to start, we're gonna put these two clips here. What this will do is hold our bracket underneath in place. 
We'll put one finger behind there, just hold that bracket. Same thing on this side. All right, so we're going to start putting our radiator support back in place. We'll start with our two 12 millimeter bolts on this side. We'll move to the matching two 12 millimeter bolts on this side. up our two tens on top. Same thing on the other side. All right, now we have the inside 12 millimeter bolts. Now we have two 10 millimeter bolts going through your radiator filler neck assembly. Now we'll put our air intake assembly back in. I'll line this up with the hose at the bottom. And our, again, our vehicle only had one clip. We'll go ahead and reinstall that now. So to install our headlight, we're going to line up the back corner with the fender. We're going to lower in the front underneath this bracket. and push in, you'll feel some resistance. That means the clips are ready to go into their spots. You can just give it a little extra push. Your holes should line up. We can go ahead and put our bolts in. All right, starting in the back, we'll put our 12 millimeter bolt in. We won't tighten it down all the way just yet. We'll get it snug by hand. Then we'll come up front, put our two 10 millimeter bolts in. We'll tighten these down. And we'll move to the back, tighten down our 12 millimeter. Now we can move to the electrical connector and just plug that in, just press together. And the process will be the same for the other side. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put our bumper back on. First thing you wanna do is center the bumper on the car. Get your center piece under your hood latch and get your two side pieces here up over the tabs. Just get your center in place. And what you want to do is take a look at your headlights, make sure your bumper is underneath the light but on top and inside of the brackets that it snaps into, both left and right. Once you've got that in place, right underneath your headlight, go ahead and push in, clip it into the clip, do that both sides. And then you can go to the fenders. and push these into the fender clips on both sides. All right, so across the top, we're gonna reinstall our push clips.
Now we can move on to the rest of the bumper. All right, so we're going to plug in our fog lights and grab our plug. You'll notice there's a slot on one side and not the other. They only plug in one way. If you look at your fog light plug, see where that slot is, just line them up, push in. All right, so we're gonna attach our fender splash shield to the bumper. I'm gonna put this clip inside the bumper and put our plastic push clips in. One across the front here on this splash shield. Another one here. And two more on this fender liner. All right, now to finish your bumper, you get two screws, one in each fender well here. They're Phillips head screws. Put our negative battery terminal on, and press it down, and tighten the bolt with a 10 millimeter socket. All right, to fill our radiator, we're going to push down and rotate our cap counterclockwise and lift off. And we're going to put a funnel in place. And we'll go ahead and fill it. Yeah, so now we're going to fill up our radiator with new coolant. We're using 50-50, pre-diluted. No need for any water. Now that we've added coolant to the radiator, put your cap on, tighten it down. You want to start the engine, let it get to operating temperature. Usually the fan will operate three or four times. Turn off the engine, let the radiator cap cool to the touch. Open the cap. If you need to add coolant, go ahead and add it if needed. This will allow your trapped air to remove from the system. You also, at this point, want to check for leaks and make sure your overflow tank is filled between the low and full mark. Add if needed. This is going to be a general tutorial on how to aim your brand new TRQ headlamp assemblies. Okay, so looking at your brand new TRQ headlamp assembly, you're going to see where your low beam is and you'll see a little dot right in the center. And that is the access point, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark that with an erasable marker, just so it's easier to see. Next, what we need to do is measure from the level ground up to this point and take note of that measurement. Now we're just gonna pull the car up to our wall. On our vehicle, we remember that the measurement was 28 inches for our access point. Your vehicle may be different, but that's where I'm gonna put this tape, just above that 28 inches. We'll do the same on the other side. Okay, so let's just back the vehicle up, straight back, 25 feet from the wall. And now that we moved our vehicle 25 feet back from the wall, we're going to start with our measurement here. That's where the headlamp center is. We're going to go down four inches on the driver's side. On the passenger side, we have our line here. What we need to do is go down two inches. To adjust the driver's side, we're going to cover our passenger side headlamp. If you look at the back side of your headlamp assembly, you're going to see something that looks like this. This is the adjustment. Some of these headlight assemblies have one, two, or even more of them, but you should at least have one. This is how we're going to adjust the headlight beam. Now we're going to lower the top part of the beam down to just below this line. When you turn the adjustment to the right, it brings the beam up, and if you turn it to the left, it'll bring the headlight beam down. And this is this way on most vehicles. Let's continue on to doing the passenger side. All right, we properly aligned our TRQ headlamp assemblies. Okay, and on the quality TRQ headlamps for a pickup truck, the procedure is going to be the same. You're going to find your center dot, mark it, and then you'll measure from the level ground up to your dot. So once your headlamps are properly adjusted, it'll be time to adjust your fog lamps. You'll notice on the driver's side, the focal point is all the way at the bottom right now. 
I would like to bring it up so it meets up with approximately the bottom of the focal point of the headlight. Some fog lamps have an adjuster, others don't. The ones that do have an adjuster, you would just turn the adjustment to the left or to the right to adjust the beam up and down to where it needs to be. Now with your TRQ headlamps and fog lamps properly aligned, you can drive down the road safely. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.